Welcome, family. I'm so glad that we could uh, be able to share together. Today, we're going to be taking a look from Ezekiel 43, the last half of the chapter. We're going to be taking a look at some very important uh, kind of insight, hopefully, to a challenging portion of Scripture. We're going to take a look at what God, His heart is for worship. And so, I'm going to enjoy this journey with you today. Ezekiel chapter 43, verses 13 through 27. These are the measurements of the altar in long cubits, that cubit being a cubit and a handbreadth. Its gutter is a cubit deep and a cubit wide, with a rim of one span around the edge. And this is the height of the altar. From the gutter on the ground up to the lower ledge, it is two cubits high and a cubit wide. And from the smaller ledge up to the larger ledge, it is four cubits high and a cubit wide. The altar hearth is four cubits high and four horns project upward from the hearth. The altar hearth is square, 12 cubits long and 12 cubits wide. The upper ledge also is square. 14 cubits long and 14 cubits wide, with a rim of half a cubit and a gutter of a cubit all around. The steps of the altar face east. Then he said to me, Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. These will be the regulations for sacrificing burnt offerings and sprinkling blood upon the altar when it is built. You are to give a young bull as a sin offering to the priests, who are Levites, of the family of Zadok, who come near to minister before me, declares the Sovereign Lord. You are to take some of its blood and put it on the four horns of the altar, and on the four corners of the upper ledge and all around the rim, and so purify the altar and make atonement for it. You are to take the bull for the sin offering, and burn it in the designated part of the temple area outside the sanctuary. On the second day, you are to offer a male goat without defect for a sin offering, and the altar is to be purified as it was purified with the bull. When you have finished purifying it, you are to offer a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without defect. You are to offer them before the Lord, and the priests are to sprinkle salt on them and sacrifice them as a burnt offering to the Lord. For seven days you are to provide a male goat daily for a sin offering. You are also to provide a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without defect. For seven days they are to make atonement for the altar and cleanse it. Thus they will dedicate it. At the end of these days, from the eighth day on, the priests are to present your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings on the altar. Then I will accept you, declares. Then I will accept you, declares the Sovereign Lord. As we look at this portion of Scripture today um, in Ezekiel, there are three things that really stand out to me. Um, we're looking at um, how uh, the description of the future temple Part of it is really the altar, but in this portion we're getting some real detail of how the future temple is going to be built, what it's going to look like. And one of the things that uh, kind of sticks out is the way that Ezekiel talks about this future temple. He doesn't talk about it like it's in the future. He actually uses the word, this is, like this is what, what it is now, even though it hasn't been built yet. The reason is Ezekiel is looking through the eyes of what God has given him of the future. Ezekiel's talking about something that is going to happen in the future, but he sees it clearly before him now. Because you see, when God does something, when God is about to do something, when God prophesies about the future, and when he's looking at the future, it's already done in the heart of God. And if it's done in the heart of God, it is done. And so what we're gonna see in the millennium is this future temple that, um, that is going to be a place, a center where God is, and there's going to be worship. In fact, the nations will worship there 
and worship God uh, at that future place. Um, the scripture says in, uh, in verse 18 in this chapter, it says, Then he said to me, Son of man, this is what the sovereign Lord says. These will be the regulations. The sovereign Lord says. See, God is sovereign, and when he is, says he's going to do something, you can just count on it. The second thing that kind of sticks out to me is there's uh, male sacrifices of animals. There's these sacrifices of male animals that it keeps saying this about it. You'll see it four times in the, this portion. Um, the, and this male animal without blemish. There's no blemish because these are a picture of Jesus Christ. In fact, this, um, these sacrifices are, in my opinion, a kind of like what communion is today for us as believers, where we are enacting something that has already taken place. Jesus gave it to us to remember what the sacrifice was that he made. And that these sacrifices, by, by the way, have been throughout Jewish history from the very beginning, from Genesis all the way through to the end of the Old Testament, there has been this continued theme that there was going to be this sacrifice. And John the Baptist saw it coming when he said, Behold the Lamb of God, right? He saw the, the sacrifice that was made. And this theme is throughout the scriptures as a reminder. And it was something that they would see and look at and see these sacrifices. They were to, supposed to see them at every time they made the sacrifice as the Messiah making that sacrifice as, as he would come. And then the third thing is the amazing detail. You'll notice it says, you know, there's it, that, uh, that the width is this many cubits and the height is this many cubits and the length is this many cubits. And it seems like, why is God so detailed? Why is it about uh, having it just so? You know, it, does it matter to God? And it does matter to God. Because what God is showing us is that worship is very important. It, you can't just throw any animal on the sacrifice, and, and you can't just build it however you, you would like. If you want to build this temple, you can't just build anything and say, well, I think it's beautiful. It really has to be ordered of the Lord because worship has to be ordered of the Lord. You see, in worship, it's not really about us. It's about Him. And uh, I, I'm reminded of the a story in the fourth chapter of John where Jesus goes to the Samaritan woman and he says, you don't know what you worship. He says, worship, of course, that then is of the Jews. But then he said this amazing thing. He says, there is a day coming that the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. For such is what God looks for. You see, God is seeking people who will worship in spirit and in truth. And he's called us to worship that way. God is to be worshiped in spirit, passionately, and in truth, in the way he is toward him. We have to know him when we worship. I remember the very first time I walked into a church where there was true worship, and it just blew me away. I saw real heartfelt people expressing an attitude of honor and praise to God. And it just touched my heart. And what I realized, that at that moment, I was right there in the presence of God. I could sense His presence because it was ushered in by a group of people who worship God His way, not their way. In closing, I want to just say we should all um, really seek God to be greater worshipers. God wants to bless us when we worship. In fact, I believe God, worship is more important to us than it ever is even to God because worship centers us. And I don't know what's going on in your life. I imagine that there's many of you who are going through challenges and times in your life. And when you're going through something difficult, the first thing we need to do is stop and get centered, get focused on God. When we get focused on God through worship, then life and everything gets in its proper place in our minds and in our hearts. And then we can stop and we can rejoice that God has everything under control. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that, God, we get a chance to come before the living God to worship and know that our worship is accepted by you because we are worshiping in spirit and in truth. God, I pray for each and every one that, Lord, our hearts would become more connected with you through worship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.